Hey everyone, today I'm going to review the course Human-Computer Interaction from Georgia Tech's Online Masters of Science in Computer Science program. I took this class back in the spring 2023 semester, along with a second class, Software Development Process, which I will be reviewing next week. Just as a reminder, this is the fourth video in a 10-part series where I review the different classes that I took as part of Georgia Tech's Online Masters of Science and Computer Science program, otherwise known as OMSCS. And I just want to thank everyone who's been interacting in the comments. It's been cool to see people asking questions and letting me know that they're interested in the program or currently in the program. I wanted to make these videos because I found them useful when I was in the program to watch videos from other folks who were either in the program or had already finished it. So um, it's really cool to see. So just a quick disclaimer up top, this class has been reformatted a little bit since I last took it. It seems like now there's a team project, whereas when I took it, there was an individual project and weekly papers. So my review will be on the previous structure of the class, but just know that it's since changed. So when I took the class, there were pre-recorded lectures and also readings that were assigned each week that accompanied the lectures. There were also two exams on material from the lectures and the readings. When I took the course, these were open note and probably on the easier side, although since they were open note, it paid to have the lectures and readings open before taking the test and having a general idea of where to find different things so that you could finish the test in the allotted time. Overall, these exams were definitely on the easier side, and when I took it, they were 30 questions each. There were also weekly papers. The lectures were split up into two main sections. There were the principles lectures and the methods lectures. The principles lectures went over things like feedback cycles, interfaces, and design principles, whereas the methods lectures were more focused on how to actually create a good interface in real life with things like lectures on human research, the ethics of doing human research, the design life cycle, and finally there was a third shorter section at the end of the course about the different applications of human computer interfaces in the real world. Like I mentioned, there was a paper due each week. They were normally eight pages. The principles and methods sections alternated each week so one week there would be a lecture on principles and then the next there would be a lecture on methods. There were also papers related to these subjects every week. So every week we had an eight page paper where we would either do a P assignment related to the principles lectures where you would answer a few questions related to material in the lectures. And in the subsequent week you would have an M assignment which is related to the methods lectures and here you would conduct one step in the design life cycle related to an interface that you found in the real world that you were redesigning. In the final month of the class, we worked on a single paper that was between like 20 and 30 pages where you did a complete iteration through the design life cycle on another interface that you were redesigning. There was also a small component of your grade related to participation, which was broken up into either peer feedback on other students' papers, surveys that you took that were for other students' projects, as well as participation in the class forum. As for pros of the class, the first one I'll say is that the lectures are really good. They're done by Professor Joyner, who also runs the class, and he's also the director of OMSCS. So he's super active in the forums. His lectures are super clear. He does a lot of research in education technology. So I think the overall execution of those lectures are really good. The readings that were assigned were also pretty additive, I would say, to the lectures. The exams were on the easier side, but I would say that overall they were fair. And I like that they were open notes that you could reference the class material while taking them. The papers were also really good. I'm not a great writer, but I found it pretty manageable to write an eight page paper every week. And I would say overall, the papers definitely added to my learning in the class. And the biggest pro of this class, I would say, and it might sound a little cheesy, but it definitely changed the way I looked at the world. 
So one of the reasons I chose to take this class, other than the fact that it doesn't have any programming and I was a little burnt out on programming from my previous class that I reviewed last week, Graduate Intro to Operating Systems, is that I had met a few people in the San Diego chapter of OMSCS at a few meetups and multiple people recommended taking this class to me because it definitely changes the way you look at technology. I don't really take the interfaces that I use day to day when I use different pieces of software for granted anymore. I can definitely think about them more critically. I notice when I'm not using a good interface and I can also appreciate when I am using a good interface. One of the points in the lectures that really stuck with me is that these days, a lot of what makes a successful product is the interface because we're inundated with so many different options that the most easy to use option is generally the one that people gravitate towards. So the class is definitely not perfect and there's definitely a few cons. Um, a small nitpick I had was that the lectures alternated between principles and methods and I found that it was just a little bit disorienting every week having to hop between one of those topics. I would also say that the methods lectures weren't as good as the principles lectures. The methods lectures had some lectures focused on things like how to do human research, the ethics of doing human research, different types of data like qualitative versus quantitative and statistics like p-tests. And I just felt like that really didn't need to be in a graduate level class that I think in my opinion, that should be assumed knowledge. And I would have appreciated having more lectures focused on the different principles. For example, there were only a couple of lectures related to design principles and heuristics for creating useful interfaces. So as someone who came into the class with not a lot of design experience, I would have appreciated having a few more lectures on these versus having lectures on things like the different types of data. I also think that this class kind of skews more towards the social science side, which is not a bad thing necessarily, but it definitely felt like it could be a bit of busy work at times. Like I mentioned, there was an eight page paper virtually every week, and it definitely is one of those things where you can phone it in if you wanted to. The material isn't necessarily cognitively difficult, but there is just a lot going on between an eight page paper due every week, plus exams to study for, lectures to watch, readings to do, as well as peer feedback that you have to give to other students, completing other student surveys, and participation in the forum. There's just a lot of moving parts, and it's not the least stressful class to take. I would also say that personally, I got very little out of the peer feedback. I got way more out of the couple of papers that the TAs would post every week from the previous week. I found that reading those papers did a lot more for my learning than reading papers that were randomly assigned to me. So like my other videos, I'll give some recommendations at the end here. I would say that this class can definitely benefit anyone who works in technology. I would say that HCI is definitely an underappreciated aspect of technology especially for more technical folks. For me, this has been one of those classes that I continue to apply in my job and just in my personal life when I use technology. Even if you don't work with interfaces directly as a product designer or a front-end engineer, this class can definitely benefit you. Even if you're someone like a back-end engineer who just designs APIs, it's still useful to think about how people use the technology that you create. And the biggest takeaway I had from this class is that you are not your user. So you always have to take their perspective into account when designing technology. It's also definitely a class that I could recommend to someone who doesn't mind writing because there are those eight page papers every week. But I also do think that this class can make you a better writer too. So that's not necessarily a reason uh, to not take the class if you're not super into writing. So like I mentioned up top, I took this class along with another class, Software Development Process. And I think at least for me, these classes paired really well together because they both go over things like the Agile method, design life cycles, and are overall just really practical classes on how to build useful software. So if someone was looking to double up while working full time, I could definitely recommend these two classes as a pair. 
So that's it for my review of human-computer interaction. In my next video, I will review the software development process, and I'll see you next time.